the highly anticipated Flash Forge Creator Max 2, is it an improvement over its predecessor? All that and more right here on the first layer. Hey, I'm Richard with The First Layer, and on this channel, we do 3D printing tutorials, reviews, and live streaming videos to help you get the most out of your 3D printer. So if that's something that you're into, make sure to subscribe and check the bell to get notified so you don't miss any of our future content. Full disclosures, Flashforge did send me this printer for a review. However, the opinions I share are my own. This video is not sponsored by Flashforge, Let's get into my review of the FlashForge Creator Max 2. With its roots going back to MakerBot's open source replicator, the FlashForge Creator Max 2 is a direct follow-up to the Creator Max Dual Extrusion 3D printer released in 2020, which I reviewed last year, and you can find a link to that review in the card and description below. Without dissecting its lineage too much, at first glance, it looks like the previous version from the outside. If it weren't for the independent dual extruders, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was the same machine. As with the replicator style printers of the past, the FlashForge Creator Max 2 has a sturdy metal chassis surrounded by a plastic shell. The metal chassis prevents the unit from twisting when you move it. As with the version 1, I like the convenience of the carry handles on both sides of this printer. The front has a large see-through acrylic door. You have the option of a fully enclosed printer by using the acrylic lid or improved ventilation by printing without it. The Creator Max 2 has a 3.5 inch color touchscreen on the front. The full-sized SD card slot and USB port can be found on the right side and the filament spools on the back of the printer. Having the filament stored out of sight on the back of the printer gives a cleaner look from the front but makes changing the filament a pain. You'll have to make sure you place it on, the, on a stand that'll give you easy access to the rear of the printer. While we're on the topic of the spool holders, you'll want to print the universal spool holders for the Creator Max on Thingiverse. I have a link in the description below. The spool holders that come with the stock printer can only hold flash forward spools of filament. While having to print some replacements is not a deal breaker, Keep in mind the FlashForge has been using this design since 2015. It's not unreasonable to expect some improvement here. Speaking of improvements, out of the box, the Creator Max 2 has independent dual extruders, or IDEX, with efficient cooling for both the heads. IDEX allows for better mirror, duplicating, and soluble printing modes, giving you a wide range of filaments to choose from, like ABS, ABS Pro, PVA, PLA, PLA Pro, and HIPS. It, is, it will also reduce the chance of filament ooze by incorporating an aluminum nozzle cleaner. You'll have to level the bed and calibrate the IDEX system to ensure proper printing alignment. Leveling the print bed can be frustrating for new users, but if you follow the directions in the manual and watch the video, you should have no problem turning out great looking prints. The print bed measures 200, by 148 millimeters and is leveled by a three-point system and moves up and down on lead screw flanked by two 10 millimeter guide rods. The Creator Max 2 has a removable print bed but uses spring clamps to hold it in place when using higher temp materials like ABS or PETG. The magnet is like the ones on lower cost single extruder printers. The magnet loses adhesion when the bed is heated to 80 degrees or higher sacrificing some build area to accommodate the spring clips. Used without the removable bed, the print surface provides proper adhesion. It doesn't release prints when cool as easily as glass, but that is what the removable bed's for. The included SD card has everything that you need to get up and running fast. For an experienced user, this printer has some welcome improvements over its predecessor. However, for the new hobbyist, it could take some time to get the results that you're looking for. How does this printer print? Setting up the Creator Max 2 for printing is straightforward and easy. It is packaged well and is almost ready to run. All you need to do is attach the print heads, level the bed, and calibrate the print heads. 
The instructions are all included on the SD card. Before I get into the software, I'd like to know if you're getting value out of this review by leaving a comment below and smashing that like button. If you're new here, consider subscribing and clicking the bell for more videos just like this one. I found that FlashForge's FlashPrint slicing software is a little dated looking compared to other free offerings like Cura, but it is fairly painless to learn. As with any slicer, FlashPrint takes a little getting used to. Once acquainted with the program, though, uh, I found it up to the task. However, one quirk of the software and hardware together is the default print settings use the right-hand extruder by default. All of the test files can be found on the included SD card. You'll also find all of the documentation there as well. I would advise checking the FlashForge website for updates to the Flash Print Slicer and firmware for the Creator Max 2. Other than the IDEX, what else has changed? Well, unlike the Creator Max, the Max 2 no longer supports Wi-Fi, at least not in the unit I received. So you can only connect to the printer via the USB cable if you want to send files directly to the printer from your computer. They also did away with the internal storage, so you can't save G-code to the printer. This was a handy feature on the original Macs because I could save files and, that I regularly print and they were handy to print and recall at a later time. Let's quickly run down the pros and cons of the FlashForge Creator Max 2. In the pros column, we've got an advanced, reliable, and easy to use. An industry-leading independent dual extruder system for maximizing productivity and efficiency. It will support mirror printing mode, duplicate printing mode, and soluble printing mode. Filament extruder scraper. The scraper off fill, it'll scrape off filament residue automatically when extruding for a perfect print. Optional flexible and removable build plate platform. Touchscreen interface is an HD IPS full color touchscreen. It's got a metal frame which provides stability during printing and printing accuracy, and it's fully enclosed. Now on to the cons. There's no Wi-Fi support. There's no internal storage. Poor spool holder design. And noisy when printing. Now how much is it? Currently the FlashForge Creator Max 2 is selling for $969 US on the FlashForge website. On Amazon it is listed, but as of the time of this recording, it is unavailable but I can only guess it'll be very close to the FlashForge website price. So how would I rate this? With features like the independent dual extruder and nozzle cleaning, they're a step up over the Creator Max. The emission of Wi-Fi and internal memory support hold this printer back. If FlashForge updates this again, I'd like to see it move to a 32-bit architecture with silent steppers. With reliable Wi-Fi, and internal storage. Like the previous version of this printer, will more than likely be used for, uh, for me anyway, for ABS and other materials that require an enclosure. So for that reason, I have to give this a three out of five hot end. Question of the day, what would you use this printer for? Please leave your comment below and smash that like button. If this was your first time checking out my channel, then consider subscribing and becoming a member. I publish new videos on Saturday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and on Sundays, I do a live stream called Ask for Help with my co-host and friend Brian Baker at 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Members get some cool perks. Check them out below by clicking the Join button. Thank you for watching. Until we meet again, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.